Oh man, this fish was just sitting there. Oh yes, and it's not a small fish at all. He's running away from me. That is not a small fish. Well, welcome back to another fishing adventure. I'm here on a rather large lake this morning, carp fishing, of course, and uh, I'm gonna use a, a baiting technique uh, that one of the viewers had commented on. It's something I'm aware of. I don't use very often, but I probably should. Uh, let me, I'm gonna explain it while I get baited up here. A few weeks ago, I made a video, talked about how often I rebait my rigs uh, with pack bait. And, uh, you know, the, the general, general answer is every hour, um, you know, and that depends on lots of different circumstances. You can go back and watch that video uh, if you want to. But there's another tactic uh, that I forgot to mention that I think is also a good idea. And that is to uh, kind of stage uh, how often you're, you rebate your rigs. And what I mean by staging is uh, that right when you get there, you start rebaiting more frequently right from the start. Maybe every 15 or 20 minutes or maybe even 30 minutes. For the first couple of hours that you're fishing, you rebait more often. And the point of that is to start loading up your swim or the area that you're fishing with little uh, pockets of pack bait all over the all over the swim and you're kind of loading up the swim in effect you're it's, it's it's kind of a way of chumming really so during those first hour or two you're you're rebaiting more frequently to, to get a bunch of bait out there and uh, kind of really make the the area that you're fishing uh, pretty attractive with lots of bait so if fish do come in they're going to spend more time there poking around you know more interesting things for them to to, to, to grub around for. And then after the first hour or two of uh, frequent rebaiting, then uh, you know go back to your whatever it is you usually do. And of course you can overdo that and uh, do it too often because I mean the whenever your rig is in here getting rebaited, it's not out there for a fish to eat. So I think if you do it too often you're kind of being counterproductive but I think what I'm gonna do to this morning just for the first hour or two is rebate about every about every 20 minutes or so this morning and I think this tactic really only applies if you're intending on you know fishing for you know more than you know, two three four hours or so because if you're just gonna be here for an hour or two you probably want to maximize your time of having hook baits in the water um, but I'm gonna be here today for probably four to six hours and that's also assuming that you don't get any bites within the first 15 20 minutes because that's possible too if you start getting bites right away within the first 15 20 minutes I wouldn't change anything I just keep putting hook baits out there and wait for the bites we'll see that'd be nice if that happens today if I don't get a chance to do this baiting campaign, if the fish just start biting immediately, <laughs> I'm not going to complain about that one bit. So the hook bait I'm using today is a couple of uh, spicy tiger nuts on the hair, as you can see. The fish just splashed right behind me. And the pack bait is a mix of uh, horse feed pellets, sweet feed, old fashioned oats, a can of cream corn, and uh, there's some fruit juice in there like some pineapple mango or uh, some kind of juice uh, my mom gave me. Thanks, mom. And uh, yeah, it's got a real sweet, sweet smell. Here we go. It's really shallow here, really shallow. Two, three feet is where I put this bait. Two, three feet of water. And it's the dog days of summer. It's like August 9th or 10th, I think. And uh, today's highs in the low to mid 90s I think okay we're fishing oh no 
Oh, there we go. That's the problem with these extendable nets is last place I fished it was real sandy, muddy. I was, I was just covered with sandy mud and you get you get any sand in between the two uh, sections of this net, it can really get locked up bad. I've had instances where I couldn't get it extended and I had to, you know, do it in the garage and put it in a vise and hit it with a hammer and ended up damaging it. Uh, just to get it apart and then I had to fix the part that I damaged and sand is the enemy of these kind of nets. Okay, it's been about 20 minutes. See how that spring feeder is almost completely empty? It's all broken apart and came off of there. That has to do mostly to do with that sweet feed. That sweet feed really enables the uh, that oats pack bait to just break apart uh, really well once it gets in the water. One of these days, if I can find a place that has clear enough water to make a video of it, I will uh, maybe throw one of these rigs in the water next to a camera and just uh, let it dissolve. I'm not big on the doing the demonstrations in an aquarium. I don't know, for some reason I just don't care for that. But let's see if I can find some clear water someday. Probably not gonna be around here. <laughs> well, rinse and repeat. Of course, with this baiting technique, you know, there's really no way to prove that it's actually helping you know if you start catching fish there's no way to say for certain that oh the reason I caught these fish is because I threw out all this extra pack bait you really can't know for sure but I, I, I would venture to say that it couldn't hurt I guess unless uh, well maybe it could actually I mean it depends on where you're fishing how uh, spooky the fish are if uh, big baits plonking down into the water making splashes uh, spooks the fish away, then I guess the more you do that, then you are hurting something. So, yeah. Don't take it from me. I'm no expert. I'm just some dude that likes to go fishing a lot. something here something breaking the surface up there yep 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 yep, yep. we're on we're on breaking the surface really really shallow water. I mean it's probably only two feet of water where my bait was and as soon as it felt the hook it uh, broke the surface and tried to get off just like the last time <laughs> big weight coming in here. This is making a big weight because it's so shallow. I don't think it's a giant fish, uh, but it's been swimming with me. So we'll see here when it gets right in front of me and realizes what's happening. <clears throat> All right, it's time for you to just get in here. Gonna allow you to jump anymore. Okay. It's a small fish, but it is a fish. About an hour and a half in here. Yeah, a little guy to start the day. Uh, fat, fat fish, short, young fish. Probably about four or five pounds. Uh, this is one of those lakes where there's all different sizes of fish. There's these, lots of these, there's 10 pounders, 15 pounders, 25 pounders, probably even bigger than that. But, uh, so you never know what you're gonna get. Here's what I'm getting today so far. Bye bye. Thank you, sir. And this hook, it got blunted somehow. It's not, not that sharp, so I'm gonna change it out. Just slide this stuff up the main line a little bit. Need my braid scissors, because these rods have braid on them. 
I don't particularly like braid that much, but uh, the whole point of these rods, having braid on them is so I can cast a long ways when I need to. It's really the only reason. Otherwise, I'd have mono. There we go. Brand new hook on there. I don't sharpen hooks. These are chemically sharpened hooks that I use here. Ouch, 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 ouch. <laughs> it doesn't take much. Chemically sharpened is sharper than you can possibly achieve with mechanical means, with a file, or even at the factory when they sharpen hooks mechanically. Chemically sharpened is sharper. You can find pictures of uh, what these hook points look like under the microscope on the internet. And aside from the fact that you can't uh, compete with a, a chemically harpen, sharpened hook with a file. Uh, when you do that, when you use a file, you're also weakening the hook. So it, the, the tip uh, gets more susceptible to getting dulled just by little bumps and stuff like that. And uh, so I just, I just throw it out. If the hook's dull, I just put on a new hook. But if you're using, I don't know, real expensive hooks, that are like $1.50 a piece or something. I could see why you'd want to try and reuse them uh, more often, I guess. But I don't use expensive hooks, so that's why I do it the way I do. I'd rather just replace them often rather than try and repair them. If that's what I do. Feel free to do what you want to do. Alright, what kind of bait should I make today? Yeah, i got this... Uh, Pineapple mango juice. I think I'll use that. I put a little bit in that in the in the bait that I already used today. But, uh, yeah, old-fashioned oats, sweet feed pellets in there, and I don't know. This was a 12-ounce bottle. I probably dumped out two ounces of it. I'm just gonna dump it all in there. And it's going to be real soupy at first. It'll probably take about 10 minutes for those oats to uh, absorb that liquid. There we go. I'm just going to leave that sit there 10 minutes and check on it. If it's uh, too wet, I'll add a little bit more oats. Got some extra here. If it's too dry, uh, I'll put a little bit of water in there. Shook the hook. Nope. Oh, he's still on there. Still on. Good. Ooh, some good weight on here, too. All right, I'm getting kind of excited now. Yeah, there's some good weight on this one. Thought I lost in that first. You get that. They seem to do that here. They do. As soon as they get hooked, they'll jump up and you know, shake their head like a bass or something. And, uh, a lot of times they've been successful in getting that hook off right away. Ooh, this is some good weight. I don't know if this camera's getting the bend in that rod, but that's exciting to see. This is a medium heavy action rod. Moving off to the right. He's in my other line now. That's my other reel ticking away as drag's getting pulled off. I really gotta turn this fish around, otherwise. Otherwise, he's gonna go into the trees down there and never even see him. Alright, got him turned around, he's going the other way. He's coming in. He's got Ned out there. He's going off to the left now. Of course, that's what they always do, right? To the left, to the right, to the left, to the right. Right here. Can't see him because the water's so nasty. Yeah. Come on in here. It's right here. Right here. And he was right here. <laughs> I just caught a glimpse, barely a glimpse of him. Still really don't know how big this fish is. Not small.
I couldn't even see my net to know if I was lifting it up under him or not. Got him. Got him. And that is a big fish. That is a big fish. Yeah, it's got my heart pumping. Crazy how dirty this water is. Just so full of algae. Oh, there's some good weight on this fish. Let's go ahead and zero this scale real quick here. I'm gonna guess this fish is about 16 pounds. All right, I overestimated, about 13. <laughs> All right, yeah, finally getting on the board with a nice big fish, 13 pounds, hard fight in this nasty, murky water in this lake. Big old tail. <laughs> yeah, really got my heart pumping. I told you there's there's fish of all sizes in this lake. You, when something hits, you never know if it's going to be a three or four pounder or twenty four pounder. But uh, I love these size fish. I'll take these size fish all day. Back in the water he goes. Catch him again another day. Big fish. See ya. Enjoy your murky green water. And I was talking about sharp hooks earlier. I had to cut the line with that fish because this hook uh, actually penetrated the strand of the net and I couldn't get it out. And uh, I think I'm going to damage the hook getting it out anyway, or damage my net. I think I'm just going to cut the hook rather than damage my net. But sharp hooks go right through that uh, strand in the net. There we go. I guess there's one advantage to the nasty green water. So you never know exactly what you got until it's in the net because you can't see it. <laughs> I couldn't see anything of that fish. I couldn't even, once my net was in the water, I couldn't even see my net. Like to know that if I had lift, you know, pulled the fish uh, over top of my net or not. It's just crazy how pea soup this water is here. A lot of places in here in Iowa are like that in the middle of summer. Let's see how this uh, mango pineapple oats turned out. I haven't looked at it since I made it like half an hour ago. Yeah, it's a little bit dry, it crumbles a little bit. So I'm gonna add a little bit of lake water, just a little bit. Two, three handfuls, that should be plenty. Mm hmm, that's a lot better. Wonderful. So, did my aggressive baiting strategy right when I got here help? Yeah, who knows? Correlation does not equal causation. Just getting this <laughs> cast it back out here. Okay. We got a big splash on the surface out there. And we are hooked up. And he is taking off to the right. Oh yes. It's only been about 10 minutes or so since that last fish. I was a bit still getting the Getting that one rig retied and then got all the other two baited up again. Here he comes. Here he comes. Right there. Still can't see him. Oh! Yeah, what's the point of turning on the net cam? Can't see anything anyway. Sure. That's a decent fish. It's not a super tiny dinker. Gotcha. Gotcha. No, no, you don't splash any of that green water up here, please. Yeah, I'm not gonna weigh this fish. Five pounds would be my guess, five, six pounds. Fun fight on this uh, green, green. How do you like that green water? Yeah, probably not. But uh, yeah, fun fish. Fish number three of the day. Back in the lake he goes. So long, get bigger. Phew. 
Those little ones always take off like a bolt of lightning, seems like. Guess they like that pineapple mango stuff. Yeah, I was kind of doing something and then I noticed this line is slack. Wow, whatever it was, swam a long ways. This gonna what's gonna happen here are we getting close I think I'm getting close yeah fish on oh man this fish was just sitting there oh yes and it's not a small fish at all he's running away from me that is not a small fish I was like I went back up to the truck to get my lunch stuff and I was gonna eat lunch and I heard a little chick chick like a little drag peel and they're like nah must just be a bullhead <laughs> no it was a big fish that got hooked and was just hanging out probably sitting there trying to spit yeah yeah it was it, it it's been a little while since I've had enough bite and I thought I was thinking well I'm just gonna eat my lunch, and then if I haven't had another fish by the time I'm done eating my lunch, I guess I'll just call it. It's right here. Of course, you can't see him. Yep. Just saw his back come up. He's gonna freak out. He's right here. He can't see the net either, though, I don't think. I thought I was going to try to be sneaky. Just gently coax him in. Got him. Yes. I snuck up underneath of him. <laughs> yeah, that's a big fish. Yeah. He's not done yet. Oh, this is big fish of the day. At least long fish of the day. I know that for sure. This is a really long fish. Whoa, 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 whoa. Need to locate that hook. Ooh, there's the hook right there. It's nowhere near his face. Boy, this is a long fish. I'm gonna guess... Well, let's go 17. 15 pounds, 14 ounces. Oh man, what a great day. This is a 15 pound fish. That's what I'm gonna call it. Pretty dang close. Big fish. Gave me a great fight. My arms are uh, pretty sore. Or not sore, but tired. And, uh, wow, is this, this is a really long fish. I might get a measurement on him before I leave. Eh, who cares, I guess. Wow, what a great day. Two big fish, two small fish. Couldn't really ask for more. I think I'm gonna call it for today. I'm satisfied, it's getting hot. I'm gonna put this guy back. Thanks for watching, I appreciate it. See you on the next one. Yeah, you big guys don't really, don't usually splash me real bad, do you? There you go. See you later.